today, as I've said on the channel, it's really exciting because we're going to get to speak to a voiceover artist and a voice and vocal delivery coach. Her name is Leanne Turner. Far better than for me to explain who Leanne is. I'll let Leanne do it. So Leanne, over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel. I'm really grateful to be here tonight. Um, yeah, so everyone, hi, my name's Leanne Turner and I'm a voiceover and I do speaking coaching as well. So uh, as a voiceover, I do the voices for meditation, podcasts, audio books, uh, online courses and uh, radio adverts too. And then when I'm doing speaking coaching, I help and train women mainly to speak effectively in business and in the corporate field too. And that could be through things like one-to-one -one coaching or going through my online courses or listening to the instructions I give for an audio book as well. So there's the two things that I do. Cool. Now, one of the questions that I think is really interesting um, to ask you, Leanne, is when people are thinking about public speaking in particular, we tend to always think about a stage mm. and a presenter standing up there. But what you do, you know, voiceover artistry, it, it is a form of public speaking. So how did you get into it? Yeah, I mean, I'd always been told for many years that, um, Leon, you have a nice sounding voice, you should do something with it. And so I kind of thought like, mm, what do you mean do something with it? What can I do with it? Didn't quite understand the clue. And, I, and at the time people used to say, I didn't quite know what a voiceover artist was. I mean, I'd always heard them on the train station, like, mind the gap, but I never knew really what that meant to me and then um so previously before I was a voiceover artist I used to work as a, um, an investigator into corruption and um, fraud so I used to do that for 10 years as well as being a magistrate and then around 2016 they gave out voluntary redundancy so I took the money ran set up a home studio set up a website got training got a demo and I thought now is the time I'm going to do something with this voice that everyone keeps telling me I need to do something with because I had no other business set up. It was this one or nothing. So I got some training and coaching from uh, a voiceover who'd been in the industry for about 25 years at that time, um, who trained me, uh, gave me lots of mentoring, went on lots of courses, day courses, online courses. And then I created a demo, which is like your audio CV um, and got that together and just started to send it out hustle very hard, contact companies, contact agencies, just constantly contact and be out there on every single platform you can think of. And then slowly but surely the work does come in. You just have to keep going and you cannot give up because when you give up, that's probably when you get the breakthrough. <laughs> I guess that is so true. I always think that when people say, um, you know, about um, getting the opportunity to present on stage or really whatever it is that you're doing at that point where you feel exactly like you said like I can't do this anymore is the moment you need to dig in because yeah. that is normally the moment where something happens yeah so can you give us an idea of some of the work that the kind of work that you do and some of the clients that you've had the opportunity to work with yeah so sometimes I've done radio adverts which could be a 20 second 30 second read on for radios could be an event coming up like a summer barbecue held by a radio station um i've done work for the national lottery where it was it was a sports event so it was a girl who was trying to get more women into football and it was a girl who was training told you can't do football you're a girl and i was basically doing the voiceover i'm a girl I like football, I can play football. It was lines towards that. So I've done those type of adverts. Um, I've done in-house work as well for Adidas where they were training their staff inside on how to create work and stuff like that and designing stuff because they were the uh, designers for the Great Britain 2016 Olympics. Was it? No. What was it? 2012. 12. 2012 I think 2012 I think it was the 2012 one so they were doing um they were doing a training for them in 2012 and 2016 as well so how to design it so they were training them through online courses so I was the voice for the online courses so kind of work like that um and then kind of um affirmation like I'm great I'm wonderful I can nail the day those type of things played against soft watery music and stuff and audio books and things like that and the courses that I create as well so kind of varied but only kind of about four areas but within those four areas podcast is a huge area audio books is a huge area online courses is huge 
um, and adverts is huge. So it sounds really small. Shen does those four things, but they're very deep um, areas. Yeah, really. I bet the, the variation is great as well. You get to do all sorts of. And so tell us a bit more about the courses that, that you offer and the things that you do when, when working with people uh, with regards to their voice mm. and vocal delivery. Yeah, definitely. I really love that because it helps me to kind of stay grounded um, and not always off in fairy fairyland with perfect scripts and stuff. So um, what I do to really help uh, my um, clients who I work with to improve the way they speak is, um, first of all, I may sit down with them if they're willing to. Some people are very shy. If they're willing to sit down and have a one-to-one -one or come on a group Zoom call so I can speak to the person because I can help you the most and I can actually hear where you're at with your voice. So that gives me a lot. And I only need probably in one minute to two minutes and I can hear exactly what's happening, where the problems are, what you think your problems are, but then I can hear what else I can help you improve in. And it doesn't take long for someone to expose what, what help they need. And then I'll create, um, I've got, I always create um, different courses and I often have a new course out maybe every month, et cetera. And this month's one is about how to use storytelling to be an effective speaker. Because you know, the greatest speakers like, you know, Oprah Winfrey, Denzel Washington, you've got Joanna Lumley, Dame Judi Dench. They are very, very good storytellers. And what is so powerful about storytelling is it brings you back to that safe place when you were a child. And that's where you're first exposed to storytelling because it gives you this escape. So I teach and train as one technique to improve your speaking is to learn how to be a good storyteller. Then, so I create different courses. One could be how to say no effectively in the workplace because some people feel very pressured to say yes all the time and just stay and work late and they don't really want to. So I create different topics about how to, speak effectively in the workplace or in the corporate business field. And then with the courses, I create audiobooks, ebooks, and templates. And then I'll have a, every week, have a Zoom call um, specifically for those that bought into the course. And then we'll have more of a Q&A session about personal questions or situations that are happening. Maybe someone's got an interview, they want to have some time and ask certain questions, how should they present on Zoom? Um, and then I always as well teach live on, on my own kind of Facebook and Instagram pages every Thursday about how to speak more effectively as well. Cool. Now, I think is, I mean, the storytelling, the everything that you're saying there and the people that you were reeling off. I mean, I totally agree, like fantastic mm -hmm. storytellers. And I think there's a real art to that when yeah. it comes to voice and vocal delivery. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, you can be a good public speaker but you can you can be a great public speaker if you really learn the art of this mm -hmm. I think it's understanding how important this tool is it's mm -hmm. your art instrument mm -hmm. and so worth understanding it and yeah. understanding how it works um I wanted to dive into some of the questions that I've received and also thank everybody who's asked questions I've received quite a lot of questions personally as well through direct message so thank you and thank you to those who put questions on the bottom of the posts and the videos this week so I'm going to dive in with the most popular one now I was not shocked at this Leanne at all yeah. because when I do public speaking training this is always one of the biggest issues yeah. that people say to me that they have and it's all about strong accents what to do if you've got a very strong accent mm. and in general the feeling tends to be that my accent holds me back mm. what, what are your thoughts about that and what do you advise yeah so there's there's a few things to consider there um it depends on who is in your audience who's listening to you so if you may have a strong accent, maybe even from France, because I've worked with many people from France, which is a lovely accent when they speak in English, but some words are said in the incorrect way. Like, say, for example, I've had a French lady and a French man who've worked with me. They all say the word clothes, 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 you know. So it depends on who you're speaking to, because they may be able to get it. But if you're speaking to an audience, say, for example, if you have an accent, maybe from uh, Asia, maybe from India, from um, Iraq, from that part of Asia, you may benefit if you're speaking to a widely European audience, because European audience, and particularly an American audience, they may not be used to hearing accents speaking English in that way. Whereas in London, UK, you're exposed to a lot of different accents uh, speaking English, so your ears get adjusted. But if you've got a huge audience in America, 
huge audience where your accent is not that popular, then I would suggest two different ways to help. Um, there's one called accent reduction, which means to reduce your actual accent and bring in another accent, which is often what you'll see actors do, where you'll see people who are American actors, but then they're speaking British or Australian, etc. And there's something called accent softening, which is you still sound like you, but you learn to articulate. So move your mouth and particularly the tongue position in the correct way to get the sound sounding more maybe British English or American English or Australian English, whichever one you're trying to go for. So I would suggest those two techniques. Um, I am not always a big fan of accent reduction because I feel that your accent says who you are, where you're from. If you're an actor and you're getting paid to, to have your accent reduced, and of course, go ahead. But if, if it's someone's doing it for the chance of like, I want to sound better in this interview, I need to reduce my accent. I wouldn't really do that because your whole background comes from where you're from, etc. So those are the two techniques, either accent softening or accent reduction, depending on who you need to speak to. I love that. And I, th I totally agree. I think your accent says so much about who you are. But that point that you uh, made about opening your mouth, I was saying that last night. And I find so often when I'm working with people, one of the <laughs> things, the difference it can make sometimes yeah. when I say, let's try again, but just really open your mouth yeah. when you're when you're talking. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, you know, yeah. I can, I totally can hear every, every word. Yeah. Um, David has asked a question as well, as well, Leanne, and he's interested in how um, do we change our voice to emphasize the take home messages? So I think, mm -hmm. how do we add emphasis to some of the, the stuff that we're saying that we really want the audience to mm -hmm. latch on to? Yeah, so when it's those powerful points or the, um, this is the most important part listening now, um, men can do this slightly more effectively than women if they've got a deeper voice. So if you're saying like, um, say for example, live your dreams, okay? You're gonna have to start very hard in the first word, live your dreams. And you have to leave that space, that dramatic pause. Just leave the silence. Silence is beautiful. Yes, we wanna improve where we speak, but sometimes let the silence do the talking. Um, so that's what I would advise. Use as much dramatic pauses as you can. Um, and some things, when you're trying to get the take and think, it may need a bit of emotion, maybe a bit of, uh, you have to kind of train yourself almost like an actor, give a little bit of tremor into it, you know, like, I want to live my dream. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. So, and then you kind of come in and say, what about you? You see, so you're kind of like your own Jekyll and Hyde where you're, you know, this emotional fairy. And then you come in as like, what about you? So you've got to be able to play. Um, but stay focused, play with the emotion, not get into the emotion where you fall into tears, but be able to play with it. Those work very well. Dramatic pauses, bring in a bit of emotion, come back in like the forceful headmaster, headmistress to drive it home and like, you know, buy this, buy whatever it is you're doing or join this, etc. Yeah, I love that. I love that answer. And I love it, the way it plays into a, it's one of the things I always say about preparation. You know, I think one of the things that you can, you can just, just think that because you're watching somebody who's very good and very accomplished, yeah. like some of the people we've mentioned today, mm -hmm. that people don't realize how much preparation and effort goes yeah. into that kind of thing. And that if you really want to deliver a performance that is so memorable that people are talking about it years later, then it's putting that kind of thought and preparation into it, that yeah. the thing that makes the difference really. Definitely, yeah. And, so, and just just to add, sorry, Rachel, with no, no, that is, um, say, for example, if you prepared a script, it's not to look at the whole script as a whole, it's to take it as each line and think, how can I, if I only, if the world ended after this line, how would I deliver it with power? So even when I do my voiceover stuff, I don't look at it as a whole draft, I'll get pencil and line it through and say, okay, I'm going to put this part, push here, pause here, dramatic bit there, bit of tearful sound here. So really cut up the script, what you need to read um because that helps you to control what it is you're saying rather than letting the words control you yeah that's such good advice so this is another question that's come in mm -hmm. and um christina asked it on on one of the posts um but it has come in separately as well to me a similar question um 
And it's really about how to strengthen the voice. So for somebody who's who's a confident speaker, but feels that their voice needs some strength adding to mm. it, um, which is a similar question to this one, which is how can I sound more mature? And again, these are people both who are very confident, but are just wondering how they can add that maturity mm. and strength to their mm-hmm. voice. Yeah, definitely. Um, so your voice is something that can be, it can give, it can trick how old you really are, really, because your voice can sound very much younger than your physical age and stuff. And I think to sound more mature, I think slow it down. Because often when, when you're speaking, you may get nervous, you may speed it up. But maturity, a mature voice has control. Um, they can speak very slow. Um, they sound very confident. It's almost as if they're enjoying every word. Um, or I don't know if it's like an English teacher who's reading out kind of King Lear or Macbeth. They enjoy every single word. So to sound more mature, and mature doesn't mean a base, because often that can mean like base. It doesn't mean that. It, it, I find to explain someone to be mature, I would say to sound stronger, obviously practice reading out loud every single day and speak slower than what you normally would because anyone who's a great speaker, they're never going fast except to prove a point. The rule is very slow and you hear every single word articulate correctly. So I think to sound more mature, definitely go slower um, and as well practice reading out loud every day, but not just reading out loud, Get someone with an articulate ear who can hear you so they can say, okay, this word sounds good. That word needs improvement, et cetera. And you need to slow down here. Um, And maturity, sound and mature works differently on different platforms. So you may sound mature face to face, but on the phone, you sound like a 12 year old. So it depends on where you're speaking, because I can have that effect on people. If they meet me only on the phone, they don't think they're speaking to a woman, maybe like a teen at times, depending on what conversation we're having. So it depends on what platform you're speaking to as well. That changes your sound. Mm, that is such a good point. Uh, um, and this was another really popular question, actually, that's come in this week for People who are wondering if they're speaking for a long time, so on stage, on all these Zoom meetings Mm -hmm. and Zoom presentations that are going on at the minute, how how can they do that without straining their voice? And in -hmm. particular, actually, one of these questions that came privately to me was somebody who's really struggling with this because Mm -hmm. they are now being, they're on Zoom calls pretty much all day and they're finding their voice is getting really, really tired. Is there any Mm -hmm. advice that you can give to that? Yeah, um, so... Your voice is often the indicator, this is with anyone, whether you use your voice for work or not, that you're, you're ill or you're becoming ill. You know, when you've got a sore throat, you feel like you're getting the flu, the voice gives off the, the, the trigger or says this body is getting sick. So what I'd really encourage you is to check your actual physical health. Um, so make sure that you're eating correctly, um, that you're actually exercising, going for walks and stuff, and um, really controlling your mind because it's a mind game as well, your voice. And as well, it may sound really kind of thing to really con- look after your voice. So your voice is made of two thin, very thin, delicate vocal cords, and they go together like that when you speak. So you've got to be very careful what you're eating and drinking. So things like um, dairy, yogurt, you know, butter, cheese, they lay a uh, mucus onto your vocal cords. So they find it harder to touch each other. And when they leave that mucus, it's even you have to keep coughing to shake the the mucus off so you can actually sound like yourself. So I'd highly advise if you've got to speak for a long day, like if I'm recording an audio book, I'll definitely avoid dairy the day or two days before because that mucus will stay on. You could have eaten on Sunday, it'll still be on there Monday or Tuesday. So avoid things like dairy. Um, And um, another thing is, um, I don't know if men are aware of it, but you know Pavarotti used to always wear a scarf around his neck when our son, uh, whatever the weather he'd wear it, start wearing a silk or a cravat or something, particularly at nighttime, because these kind of nighttime drafts and chills can really affect your, your, if you're getting strains in your neck and stuff. So start protecting your neck with a small cravat. I know it's summer, but it will really make a difference as well. And also, um, as well, I'm talking about food and drink, um, what you're drinking throughout the day. So I highly suggest drinking water, but not cold water. Boil the kettle, put that on into the water. And, okay, if you can't manage boiling hot, put a little bit of cold water on the top. Plus, slice cucumbers, uh, lemons, 
And if you can do a bit of honey as well into it, that will keep your vocal cords moist because they need protection. Water alone will be very good. If you put these extra things in it, it will really help protect your voice. So I would say drink a lot and that is what will really help you. And um, take breaks in between with what you're saying. And um, just and when you don't have to talk, just sit in silence, just rest. Yeah, that's so true. It's such a good point. Because I think a lot of the time, especially at the minute where everything's on Zoom, yeah. the tendency is to finish that and then go straight into something else, whether you're at home talking to somebody, but having those moments of rest that yeah. you can feel makes such a difference. Yeah. So this is kind of a um, similar question. Um, somebody's asking, when I stand up in a meeting and when I find myself in front of an audience, Mm-hmm. I always find my my mouth drying up. Is there any advice that you can give? Mm-hmm. So um, some of it could be kind of stress and nerves related and some of it could be your body just physically like, I need water. Um, so one of them could be have a small bottle of water with you and just sip it in between. Um, and another way to try and combat that is probably before you're going to speak, maybe just quickly in the office toilets, start doing exercises to stop the tightness. So things like, and then you can do like humming because that's going to release in your neck. So, and then just kind of roll your neck as well because part of that reflex is because of stress and like the fear of, oh my gosh, I'm going to speak. People are going to hear me. So you've got to really go in there and relax and always check in with your shoulders because if they're up there, you're not going to call, you're not going to create a good sound and uh, breathing. So a lot of this tightness has happened because just not effective breathing. And I 100% recommend, I know that it's lockdown, but if you have not really been trained on how to breathe correctly, one thing that will train you on how to breathe correctly is to go swimming. If you cannot swim, learn how to swim and learn how to swim um, with your head in the water. So you can actually train yourself on how to control your breathing that has been 100% helped me a lot in how I uh, produce my voice and stuff because I've, I've trained myself within the water how to breathe correctly, to really control my breathing. And now I use that even more so when I'm doing my voiceover. So I think when the pool's open, that's a really, really good one to really learn how to breathe correctly. I love that. And I think as well, the great thing about the advice that you're giving is um, – Obviously, these are things that people can do, but it's it's showing as well that actually, if you really want to improve these things, then you need to dedicate the time to do that. It's not yeah. just a case. Um, I think sometimes there's the feeling of what can I do instantly to make a difference mm. at this moment? And when there mm. are, there are like the odd things that you can do, yeah. really, if you want to improve, it's dedicating that time mm-hmm. to, you know, to the art of it. So if people do want, you know, they, they're, they're watching this Leanne and they're thinking you know I really need some help what what should people do how do people get in touch with you yeah definitely um I always hang out online so you can get hold of me on um my website's great www.leannesvoice.com and I'm on there um and I'm on Facebook on Instagram Leanne's Voice and um I'm on Twitter I'm on TikTok as well. I love TikTok. So I'm on then. It's Leanne's Voice. And you can just um, email me, leanne at leannesvoice.com. And I spell my Leanne slightly different. So it's L-E-I-G-H-A-N-N-E. So put that one in and then you'll be able to find me. Um, So you can get hold of me, DM me, leave me a voice note as well if you can on whatever platform. That really helps so I can really hear your problem. And um, then we can take it from there, whether it means that you need to sit down with me for a coaching call or you're happy to me to talk you through one of the um, courses that I've got up. Or if you just want to join the live classes and get the tips like that, I'll go from my page. But definitely, I think today is a time where you need to progress. You know, things are changing. Although it feels very slow because we're still in lockdown. But uh, if you do not, like you said, if you cannot master the art of public speaking, and that just means speaking anywhere, you know, things are going to become much more difficult. Definitely. Mm, Definitely. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for for joining me today. And um, I'm going to put, I'll put your details below this video as well when we're done. But um, thank you so much, Leanne. It was fantastic. Thanks for all your insights.